The tutorial of this section focuses on how to solve linear inequalities. Now the basic principles that are applied in solving linear equations can also be used here. Let's take a look at a few examples. So here with example 1, we have x minus 4 is greater than 3. Now this greater than we could treat as an equal sign essentially. Now if that's the case, if we want to isolate this x, we need to get rid of this negative 4 here. So in order to do that, we need to add 4. And that will cancel it out right there. And we also need to add the 4 to the other side. So that gives us an x, and then we'll keep the greater than sign, and then 3 plus 4, which is 7. So our solution to example 1 is x is greater than 7. Now if someone were to ask us to plot this solution on a number line, we would just take the answer we got here. So for example, x is greater than 7. So we could just find wherever 7 is on our plot. Now for us, we don't have a labeled plot, so we could just draw it where we want. So here is 7. Now x is greater than that but it's not equal to 7. So since it's not equal to 7, we're just going to have an open loop like that at 7, but x is going to be greater than. So x could be any number bigger than 7, which would be here in the positive area, the positive direction. Now what about example 2? So we have 3x plus 2 is less than or equal to 8. Now again we could treat this like we would treat an equal sign. So let's isolate the x. So first we need to get rid of this 2, so we'll subtract it to both sides. That leaves us with 3x is less than or equal to 8 minus 2, which is 6. And now to get x by itself, we just need to divide the 3 to both sides. So when we do that, we get x is less than or equal to 2. So there's our solution for example 2. Now if we were to graph it on a number line, we would find where 2 is. So here's 2. Now x is less than or equal to 2. Now if it's equal to our dot right here is going to be a closed loop because it can equal 2 but it can also be less than 2 so we'd also have a possibility of any of these numbers back here because this is heading towards the negative direction or less than 2 so that's what it would look like if we graphed it on a number line now here's another example Let's say we have 2x minus 1. It's less than 3x plus 5. Now again, we could treat this as an equal sign. So let's just move this 3x over here. So in order to do that, we need to subtract it to both sides. So 2x minus 3x. 2 minus 3 gives us a negative 1x minus 1 is less than 5. So now isolating the x, we need to move this 1 over, so we're going to add it to both sides. That gives us negative x is less than 6. Now, there's a couple different things we could do here. One thing would be to either multiply or divide a negative 1, which if we do that, we get x is greater than negative 6. So whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, you switch the sign to face the opposite way or the opposite direction. So instead of it being negative x is less than 6, it's x is greater than negative 6. Now another way you can look at this to understand why this happens is let's say we have the negative x is less than 6. Well, what if instead of multiplying or dividing, we added? So we add the x to both sides. 
that gives us 0 is less than 6 plus x. And then we need to subtract the 6. Well, that leaves us with negative 6 is less than x. Or in other words, x is greater than negative 6, which is the same thing as this. So no matter which way you choose to solve that, you'll always end up with x is greater than negative 6. So keep that in mind. If you ever need to multiply or divide by a negative number, you need to switch the direction that the greater than or less than sign is pointing. So now again, to put this on a number line, we'll find where negative 6 is. And since it's not equal to, we'll just have an open circle here at negative 6. But x will be greater than that. So x could be any number in this direction here. So let's look at examples 4 and 5. So here we have 3x is less than or equal to 3x plus 2. Now if we were to solve this, no matter what we do to isolate the x, they're going to end up canceling. Because we want to move this over here or this over here, we need to subtract 3x from both sides. Now when we do that, we're left with 0 is less than or equal to 2. Now this statement here is correct. And what it means is that no matter what x is here, 2 will always be greater than or equal to 0. Now if something like this happens, where you end up with a true statement, the possible number of solutions is infinite. Or pretty much you could have any real number that you want for x. So x would be all real numbers. which gives us an infinite amount of solutions here. Now what about with example 5? So we have 2x minus 1 is greater than 2x plus 4. Now again, when we try to isolate the x, they're going to end up canceling each other. So if we subtract 2x from this side, we can do it to the other side. Now 2x minus 2x will cancel out on this side as well. And that leaves us with a negative 1 is greater than 4. Now this statement here is not true. Now if that's the case, that means no matter what you put in for x, you'll never get a true statement out of this equation. And if that's the case, then there is no solution. So keep those two different cases in mind as well when you're solving linear equalities. Okay, so for these next two examples, they involve multiple equations. Now, they both have different behaviors, and we're going to take a look at each one of them. So let's start with example 6. So we have 2 is less than 2x plus 2. And we also have 6 is greater than or equal to 2x plus 2. Now let's solve each one of these individually. So let's start with this one. We could subtract the 2 over here, which means we can do it to the other side. So we end up with 0 is less than 2x. So now when we divide the 2, we get 0 over 2, or 0, is less than x. Or in other words, we could say x is greater than 0. So there's one of our solutions. And we also have this one. So let's isolate the x here. So we could subtract 2, which means we need to do it to the other side. So we get 4 is greater than or equal to 2x. Now divide by 2. 4 divided by 2 will give us 2 is greater than or equal to x. So now here's our other statement, our other solution. Now we can combine them to be one solution. 
So x is less than or equal to 2, but it's also greater than 0. So we could combine them uh, with least to greatest. That's the typical way of doing it anyway. So 0 is less than x, but x is less than or equal to 2. So we took these two solutions and merged them into just one big solution. Now if we were to put that on a number line, we need both of those endpoints. So we have 0 and 2. Now x is greater than 0, so it won't equal 0. So we have an open circle there. But it's less than or equal to 2. So it can be equal to 2, so we'll have a closed loop there. Now since it's greater than 0, but also less than or equal to 2, it could fall anywhere in between these two numbers. So we would shade in that area. So that is how you would graph inequalities with an AND statement on a number line. Now what about example 7? So again, we're going to solve both of these individually first and see what we get. So we have negative x minus 3 is less than or equal to negative 6. So to isolate the x, we'll need to add the 3 to both sides. That leaves us with negative x is less than or equal to a negative 3. Because negative 6 plus 3 is still a negative. And now to get rid of the negative here on the x, we could either multiply or divide by a negative 1. So that gives us an x is greater than or equal to 3. So remember, when we multiply or divide a negative number, we need to switch the sign. So there's one of the solutions. Now let's do the other one. So we have 2x is less than negative 2. Now to isolate the x here, we just need to divide by 2. So when we do that, we're left with x is less than a negative 1. Because negative over positive is a negative. Now here, if you notice, we have two different endpoints. We have negative 1 and 3. Now, if you look here, x is less than negative 1. So it's not going to equal. So I'll have an open loop. But it could be less than negative 1 or it could be greater than or equal to 3. So here, it's not staying within a, any bounds necessarily. It could either go off in this direction or in this other direction. So that's why it's an or statement. Either this could be true or this could be true. So that's how you would deal with inequalities with an or statement. And that about wraps up the tutorial on solving linear inequalities.